Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this packed video short, we're going to cover curriculum architecture design, one of three levels of instructional systems design of the PACT processes. PACT is an acronym. It stands for performance-based, accelerated, customer and stakeholder driven, training and development of any blend. CAD is both a product and a process. The processes of CAD include four phases of a typical project. Phase one, project planning and kickoff. Phase two, analysis. Phase three, design. And phase four, implementation planning. A curriculum architecture project does not produce any new content. It simply analyzes the performance requirements of knowledge and skills, assesses existing content as to its availability to be used as is or after modification or not appropriate to this effort. It designs a learning and development or training and development path, a sequence of instruction, a learning continuum. It identifies both what already exists and where the gaps are. In phase four, those gaps are prioritized and priced for development and or acquisition as appropriate. The products of CAD include learning and development paths or training and development paths or learning continuum or developmental roadmaps. These have been named many different things by my clients since I've been doing this going back to 1982. CADs lead to ADDIE-like MCD and IAD efforts in the PAC processes, modular curriculum development and acquisition, and instructional activity development and acquisition. Two ADDIE-like sets of methods that are the new product development equivalent in the PAC processes. Central to curriculum architecture design is the articulation of content at an instructional activity level, the lowest level of design, eventually, of the PAC processes. But at a CAD effort level, one is simply looking at events, which are courses and workshops, and their modular structure, which are called modules that will be converted to lessons after a CAD project. CAD organizes all of its content at the most modular level into these five tiers of the enterprise content architecture or module inventory structure. Tier one is where all of the organizational orientations exist. Welcome to the company, welcome to the business unit, welcome to the division, welcome to the function, welcome to the department, welcome to your job, welcome to the teams that you may be on, and then in Tier 2, there's a deeper dive that's done in Tier 2 performance orientations. These are the equivalent of advanced organizers that don't teach how to do the job, but demystify it thoroughly. Tier 3 content are the enabling knowledge and skills. Things like laws, regulations and codes, policies and procedures, tools and equipment, interpersonal and personal development skills that are enablers of terminal performance. Terminal performance is covered in the PAC processes at a Tier 4 or Tier 5 level. In Tier 4, there are performance how-to sets of content. These are shared across more than one target audience. In Tier 5, the performance how-to's are unique to a particular target audience. It's through this modular structure of content, quite different than learning objects, as that concept has been brought to market over the last decade or so. This enterprise content architecture utilizes both the performance analysis data and the enabling knowledge and skills data, as well as aligning to the current organization chart.
I've been practicing, publishing, and presenting on these methods since 1982. My recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in great detail.